Let's bring some more stories now. And a month after they were evacuated to Ghana from war torn Ukraine, some medical students say the education remains uncertain. Government has promised to ensure they are integrated into schools in Ghana to finish their programs. But the students say the longer it takes, the worse the situation becomes, even as fighting continues in Ukraine. Comrade in the phone reports caught up with some of the students a month on. When Dokas Koyo Jabate was on the flight back from troubled Ukraine a month ago, amidst the anxiety and trauma, she did not know what her educational future would look like. She is still yet to recover fully. Bit by bit, little by little, you can't hold on to it for a long time, so we have to just move forward. But for Dokas, her school, the Sumi State University, has agreed to continue online teaching even as the Russian invasion of Ukraine continues. Okay, so for the physical rehabilitation, I think that um, for people with hypertension, they could have exercises more often. Like She joins the virtual class in the morning to catch up with lectures. But that has not been smooth. Please can you hear me? I'm trying to answer, but I think you can hear me. A lot has changed, to be honest. Um, time difference, um, internet and all of that. So with the time difference, we have classes by 8 a.m. Ukrainian time, but in Ghana it's 5 a.m. So you have to wake up early and then you have to start classes by 5, which is really hard. And sometimes internet and breaches, you want to have class and the internet connection is really poor. So it's really a major problem. Dorcas, who is a level 400 student of medicine, tells me she has been lucky to secure a place at the Greater Accra Regional Hospital to do her clinicals. Many of her colleagues have been unable to. The clinicals in the first place is like practical aspects of the medical course. So you can have like a real knowledge on what you're actually learning, like putting it into practice. And the school writes the letter for you, then you send it to the hospital of your choice, then they enroll you to start it. But when we came here, because of the war, we were not given the letters, so we had to write our, the letters ourselves. And then I added um, documents sh showing that I studied in Ukraine. And then after that, we submitted them, then they reviewed and then go back to us. But we were told that we had to pay an amount to be able to like start the process. So we paid and then the process started and then we enrolled. Some of them haven't been able to do the clinicals because people live far, people live near monetary issues. Not everyone could afford to pay. Prince Danso Tinakwa is one of the students who has been unable to secure a facility for his clinicals because of the charges involved. I haven't been able to do that. It's because I have to pay, that's why I haven't been able to. If it's free, I would have done on it. I know a few who have been able to successfully start. And uh, even that one, they are paying it themselves. The ministry are sure that they are going to do something about it by getting, uh, I mean, placing us or making arrangements for a clinical rotation for students in their clinical years. So we are hoping to get a feedback too on that. There are many other students who find themselves in a similar situation. But with the setting up of a committee with a mandate to propose an integration plan by the Education Ministry, there is some hope for these students. I'm grateful. Uh, for the openness of the vice chancellors and their willingness to uh, have a way of getting them back in. So a committee has been set up, uh, chaired by Dr. Nsiansari, the presidential advisor on health, and our goal is to make sure within four weeks guidelines will be uh, provided uh, to ensure the, that the integration directed by the president becomes a reality. Dorcas, Prince and the others hope the uncertainty will be over in four weeks so they get back on track and complete their medical course as soon as practically possible. Komna Adom, TV3 News, Accra.